everybody, how goes it? This is my first Mystery Craft Along. I'm actually testing it prior to the actual Mystery Craft Along, but I thought it would be fun to film it and just sort of show you guys what I'm working with. And let me just jump over and pull up the instructions. Then I can walk you through the uh, specific steps. Here we are. You zoom in. So let's talk supplies, and I'm going to kind of work backwards because I, I cut this in order. So the first thing you're going to need is some kind of ephemera, uh, about a two-inch size piece. This is from the um, summer coffee box I got as part of a gift certificate from Craft Roulette from um, Not Too Shabby. And then we have, well, I guess I can do the pieces in order because this will probably make zero sense. Anyway, so the first piece we have is this white one, which is the card base, also called solid one, which is 10 by 7. Solid two is 10 by 5, which is the purple. Solid three is this itty bitty one by three, which is the pink. Solid four is two by 10 and a half, which is the yellow. Yellow is kind of a, as you can see with the, the ephemera too, like yellow is kind of an overarching theme here. And then we get into the pattern paper. You need six, count them, six of solid pattern paper one, which is two and three quarters, sorry, two and a quarter by six and three quarters. So you're going to basically need a 12 by 12 sheet, and five of them you can cut across, and then the... Uh, sixth one you're going to need to cut out of kind of sideways so basically you want a non-directional pattern for this i did this cute little sun and there is a teal more subtle pattern on the back if we want to change out to that uh, that is pattern number one number two is a three by three and i use this uh, cat scrappiness summer vibes i believe the name of it is Pattern paper, because it had some really excited uh, pineapples. And this is also fairly non-directional, and it's got hot pink on the back if we decide to use that, although that's not really pattern paper, but, you know. And then there are four 2x2 two two squares. This is from the Not Too Shabby pad. It's a 6x6, six six, so that's why I didn't cut the first piece from that. And then there's pattern paper... Piece number eight, which can be either pattern paper two or three, which is one and a quarter by five. So there's a lot of pieces of paper. I think Lynn counted, and it's 16 total. So, you know. Um, it actually, since most of these are repeats, other than cutting these, which confused me because I did it wrong once because I didn't know, know how many pieces I had of a similar pattern, I was going to go with this guy, but then I realized I only had enough to do four, so wah wah. Uh, we have some leftover pattern paper for our next craft roulette card or whatnot. And there are some notes. The first note is solid two, which is the purple, should be uh, a thin card stock. And patterns two or three can be the same or different. Uh, mine are different, obviously, but uh, in theory, you could just have this pattern one, and then everything else could be the same other pattern. Item eight can be from either pattern paper, and all pattern papers can be the same or different. So, in theory, you could just, if you had two sheets of 12 by 12, you could cut the whole thing. So, let us see how well we do following instructions. So, the first step here is to fold our card base basically and we want to score at we want to score along the 10 inch side which is the long side at two and a half and five and seven and a half so this is ten 
10 minus 7 would be 3. So this would, 7 would be, so 2.5. So I guess it's, it's, yeah, it's 2.5, 2.5, and and so this is, looks like they're basically equal. Anyway, so we have four segments that are all more or less the same. Let us move this slightly. And it's going to be a valley fold, and just going to reinforce that valley fold, mountain fold, valley fold. So we have sort of an accordion thing here. So that is for our base. So I will put that over here to the side. I did white for the base on purpose so it would be easy to remember which one it is. Score number two, which is the other 10 inch piece. Rack number two is two by 10 by five. So this is the other one. So this is uh, essentially the same. Only um, this is this is the the same scoring, but they're all mountain folds, which is interesting because this essentially is going to make like a cube, if you will, or whatever you would call that, a cylinder. Only not uh, so you have it like that essentially. Score number two, along the 10 inch side from the top left corner to the bottom of the middle. The top left corner to the bottom of the middle. I think we can just line this up with the yeah so the top left corner oh that was the top right corner oh well well we can flip this over I guess um, the top left corner well, we'll just reverse these I guess do, 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 do. Top left corner. From the top left corner to the bottom of the middle score line. Score two, 10 inches from the bottom left corner to the top of the middle. So top left corner to the bottom, bottom left corner to the middle. So that's basically this. We just sort of sort of a little off, but you get the idea. So we have uh, like this is all folded. You're creating an X. top right corner to the bottom right corner. So then we do another X. Oops. Uh. Well, this is all screwed up now, but let's see if we can't regroup. So, well, there's, oh, I see. So this 
in theory, might work better. There we go. Well, 19th time's the charm, I guess. I guess you could also, like, not score this and just sort of fold it a little bit. Curious what this line goes to. Oh, these line up with, uh, oh, that's good to know. So if I line up six and then line up here, this probably will work. So then I can just go down six. Yeah, that works. Alrighty. I guess we will continue. This is fairly messed up at this point, but you know, just sort of reinforcing these a little bit. I don't quite get where, th where this is going. I mean, this is almost like, uh, I mean, this is almost like something you'd fold in, kind of. Anyway, guess we shall wander on as we hopefully don't screw up. Hold the score lines to collapse so it collapses into a triangle. Okay, so the whole thing. Collapses into a triangle. Well, hopefully our screw-ups will be hidden. So that that's what we have. We have sort of this whole... What could this be? I guess it could be an explosion card. It kind of feels like that. Or some kind of uh, something that has, you know... I guess you could stick things in here. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. So we have... A triangle. Clue six. With number one facing you on the the 10-inch top with the Valley Mountain folds, glue number five to each panel. We should have number five is pattern one. So basically, they're saying you need to, you know, it hear it like this, essentially. So, we can do that. I will reach for my tape. I'm pretty sure I had... Ah, here we go. This might be a good job for Tape Runner. Let me... Move my scoring things out of the way, and actually, we could just use the big one. Let's just use the big one. This is might be more of a job for a large tape runner. But interesting. Anyway. Yeah, and then these basically are all, yeah. Whoops, let's not do these together. We don't need to adhere our pattern paper together. We just need to adhere it correctly, you know. And the nice thing about these non-directional papers is I don't really have to worry about it too much. In terms of... Except I put one somewhere else. Ah! The one I partially taped. Let's work on that one first. It's interesting because I always do these the other way where I watch other people struggle with it and then, you know, well, I guess it's not quite so much that. It's more like I find it a lot easier to pick the patterns if you kind of have a sense of what you're making as opposed to if you don't. 
So those two we are saving, and then this one we are not. This one we are doing the same thing with. So we have that only with pattern papers on it now. Trim a sliver from each side of two. Number two. Each side of number two, solid two, which is the one we folded a bunch. Yeah, so. So basically unfold it and then trim a sliver off each side. Okay. So that you look more, more like nine by seven eighths as opposed to 10. So I guess we can do that. If only we could just trim off like, I'm curious why we had to fold this if we were going to trim a sliver off, but hey, we are trimming a sliver. Unless other people screwed up the folding too, but hey, let's see. Okay, so we've trimmed off a sliver. And I guess that just sort of just corners it a little bit. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Cut number six. Number six, which is a three by three, on the diagonal once, you will have eight pieces. So I guess we're saying, oh, these are the wrong scissors. Are my good scissors here? I am not sure where they are. I guess we will utilize our trimmer to do this as well. Cut number six. On the diagonal once, number six is three by three. Repeat by number seven. So there's like to number two. Oh, I think what we're saying is I think four. I mean, I think the idea here is to cut these in half and then cut these in half. And these halves would go on the little pieces and these halves would go on the big pieces. I. I think that's true. Like you wouldn't have eight pieces. You'd have, I don't know, whatever, less than that. You'd have four. I mean, you'd have four of these. Oh, well. I think that's the idea, though. Because you'd have four big triangles and then eight little triangles. So I think you'd have four big ones and then eight little ones, you know, for the same reason. Unless you won't, I mean. So I mean, essentially the point of the, this is that you're decorating this purple piece with these other ones. Although that doesn't quite explain what all the other pieces are for, but. Um, Oops. 
Last McCutter. These I might just cut with scissors because I think this might be just kind of a mess if we do it the other way. Yeah. And then these are all basically inset into the purple, which I think will look cute. Obviously, this tends towards a much more complicated card than I would normally make, but hey, we will find that out. And we do have our fancy smancy Catherine Berniston glue bottle, which I am just a really big fan of. But anyway, now we basically glue all the triangles to all the triangles. Although what exactly this is, I have no idea, but we shall figure it out eventually, I suppose. And since we're really just gluing paper to paper, this shouldn't be too bad. And it will cover up all the jacked up nature of my original folding, which I am quite looking forward to. Um, obviously, if you're... You could use a squeegee for this, but since this is kind of a strange piece, I think I'm just going to glue, glue everything down. And um, this is using Linco glue, so it should be pretty quick to grab. Then you can just sort of do that, but, you know... But yeah, this is definitely something I would use non-directional paper for. Maybe not forever. I mean, like, I feel like if you knew how the pieces all went together, you know, like on a second or third attempt, um, you know, you could probably make this. You could do a little bit more. But I'm glad, like, these are just sort of fun non-directional papers, so that, that works too. And the nice thing about this glue is it's, as you see, like when gluing, it's very good at gluing paper to paper, so. And I do like a little working time for something like this, since basically I don't know what I'm doing. And having a little time to play with it is not a bad thing. I'm assuming this is going to, at some point, attach to this card base in some way. I can't quite figure out how, though. I mean, like, where you'd have something like this, maybe. Or, I don't know. I guess you could do it some other way, too. But we have more triangles to glue down. And it seems like you could make a, like, a simpler version of this, too, if you, like, omitted the pattern paper. You know, obviously it would probably turn out a little more plain if you did that, but I mean, like, if you were either going for speed or just wanted, like, a simpler look. Assuming, of course, we get it figured out, but, you know, I mean, I think that the vast majority of the paper is really working on uh, this piece, too. Basically. And I think we can let the, basically let this dry while we figure out what the rest of the card looks like. Because there's two more pieces of pattern paper and a few other things. But I will say, once you get to... Once everything's cut up, like, the gluing itself, I think, gets kind of repetitive. Um, in terms of, like, you know, you're not going to get lost in the middle of what you're doing. I guess, I don't know if repetitive is quite the word I want, but, you know, like, it's uh, sort of one of those craft projects that just sort of is 
you know, relaxing, I guess, because it, you know, you sort of have a sense of what it's going to be, and like as you can see, I'm not the most straight gluer, but um, the nice thing is this is pretty forgiving. And the instructions make sense as to why this would be more of a sort of lighter thing because you want it to be able to fold. Yeah. Although, this might actually attach this way, in which case I did everything wrong. But anyway, I guess if that's the case, we can just redo, we can just fold it in the opposite direction. I'm thinking that that might be, that I may have glued these all to the wrong side. So, um, I, but I think that since the actual piece of paper isn't glued in any way, we can just invert it. But, uh, we shall see as we continue, if that is the case. But I'm thinking, like, the idea would be that, like, the pretty part would be on the inside, and then you'd sort of adhere this here. So, like, you know, and then probably these are um, going to be where the other two pieces go. I'm not sure what the rest of this is, but uh, just, I may have, I may need to just invert all my folds. Or maybe not. I mean, I think we kind of will need to wait and see. Um, I would guess the the pretty side, I'm assuming, is like the inside of the card base. Oops. Here we are. Should be the last piece here. And I think if we... We could just flatten this out and then figure out which side goes on the inside. Okay. Match the center folds on one and two. Glue two to one. Apply glue on the diamond shape on the back of two. And close to glue it. See what we're saying. So, match the center folds on one and two. So, we collapse, whoop, collapse this back down. Yeah, so match the center folds on one and two, and apply glue to one. Apply glue only to the diamond shape created in the center on the back of two. I think we're saying that we want it to do this, and then... Like that, that would sort of collapse that way. Collapse and insert the diamond shape. Glue to the diamond shape and close it together. Use number four to create a belly band. Use number eight as a layer on the front of the belly band. Oh, I see. So it's a 
gatefold card because I went ahead. So if it's a gatefold card, I am totally confused as to how this would work. Because, like, I guess it's an explosion gatefold. Oh, I see. Like, it's a diamond like this. So the idea is, like, these would be attached and then it would open. But this is, I was correct that the pretty stuff should be on the inside, basically. So we have to just refold this a bit. Yeah, so essentially it's this, right? Like this is sort of what we're going for at the end of the day. And then this is the front, obviously. But it's matched the folds. So I think this is what we're going for. So when you open it, you get the explosion, and that's exciting. But I think what this is saying is blah, 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 blah. Matching the center folds on one and two. Okay, so matching these center folds on one and two. But it's kind of weird because it's like, I don't know why you'd bother to put a fold here if it's basically going to be a gate fold card. I guess so you can kind of open this and the, these sort of to give more movement to the card. Anyway, but that's basically what we're doing, I think. So apply glue to the diamond shape on the back of two. Yeah, so it's find my glue. Well, this is convenient because it's this is the part I screwed up initially, but yeah. Basically, pick somewhere to glue this. I think I'll just glue it in the center. And then, then apply glue here. I'm just holding it a little bit so it attaches. Goodness, I love this glue bottle. Um, but that's not what this is about. But then you would... So you've sort of glued this whole explosion piece in. Like that, and like that. And then... Use number four to create a belly band. Use it number eight. Number four is the two by ten. I guess you would. On the front. And number nine. Use number four to create a belly band. Use number eight as a layer on the front of the belly band. I see. So, like. I guess we could just. It's like we would just sort of do that to make a belly band, I guess. Then we would fold this down. Then we would use layer 8. Oh, I see. Then we would use layer 8. Yes, piece 8. 
which makes sense because that would be half. Then you add a focal image there. Score number three. And add two glue tabs. Oh, I see. And then maybe. So this is a belly band. So we would, then this would basically, except it's kind of too, well, I guess it, this is a, oh, yeah, this, no, no, this works. Okay, so like this would be the belly band. I get it. Number three. Guess we need our score thingy again. Move that out of the way temporarily. Uh, score at a half inch. Score at a half inch. One inch. Oops, one inch. Two inches and two and a half inches. So we would do valley. Oops. Yes, valley. Valley mountain. Why are we not scored here? Oh, here we go. Valley mountain valley. Oh, I see. So it creates a little pop-up thing. Fold the card in half with half inside fold facing up. Glue one tab on each side to each side of the middle fold. Oh, I see. So this goes on, like, each side of the middle folds, and then you glue your sentiment on here to sort of do, like, a, a pop-up. So you close it, but when this is... I get it. I guess we probably need to grab a sentiment out of here, then. This one's cute. It says... Make it iced, please. That's a good one. Uh, is there other? I'm going to grab... I do like Ice Latte a little bit better, I think. I like that one better. Use the cat running around. It is sort of sunset, and that's kind of his thing. And then we just add a little glue, add a little glue. And then put this here, and hopefully don't adhere it down too much. Yeah. Yeah. We had, yeah, here we go. Uh, there we go. So it's sort of like, as you open this pops up, sort of. It's a little wonky, but you get the idea. So these adhere here probably. So let's go and get those on. And then we can finish our belly band. And I think we got the card right, but who knows. We shall check it out, and I'm sure that the people doing this for real on Saturday will probably do a way more competent job than me. Here's hoping. But this is a really cool card. 
I don't know if it's quite a me card, but it's a very cool card, and I am a fan. And then we just need to... Determined what would look good with pineapples. There was a... Did I put it... Take it out? There is a, a fun lady... Here she is, with her sunglasses and her coffee. I think this would be perfect. I think we'll just glue her to the center here. And let the coffee hang out. Let me just clean off my glue. Find my... Pin for my glue and tell you all about this. Yes, if I can. There we go. Sometimes getting the pin in is a little tricky. So here's our belly band. Our belly band just slides on the top of the card. There we go. A little tricky. I think if I had to do this again, I might make it a little bigger. But So belly band on the card. And then you just slide the belly band off and you open it up and it says ice latte and it has this cool explosion of color on the inside. So a very neat card, even though I screwed it up about four times making it, but I would invite you to give it a try and try doing it correctly the first time. But, I mean, it was still a lot of fun. And... Thanks for checking this out. I think this was a little bit of a longer video, more like a 40-minute make, but uh, I think if you sort of got all your stuff together, I think you could make this relatively quickly. A lot of it with the mystery craft along is just trying to figure out what to do. Anyway, shout out to Karen Verniston. Love these glue bottles. And uh, talk to you guys later.